Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another episode review from Season 6 of The Loud House. Today's episode is titled Puns and Buns. First, we'll discuss the plot and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. In this episode, Luann gets a job at the Burp and Burger, and because her comedy antics with the customers are becoming a nuisance, her boyfriend and assistant manager Benny tries to keep her away from his boss after he's told to fire her. But when it's revealed she was never fired at all, and Benny has to fire her for real, Luann doesn't take it too hard. And yet, she's allowed to keep working, but now as a sign spinner, after the usual guy Otis got banged up because of spinning said sign. I never knew sign spinning could be that dangerous, but now I know. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. I'll start the review by saying we got to see, well, technically here, the return of one of the actors who used to be a regular cast member for three seasons. The Bourbon Burger manager, Andre, is voiced by Andre Robinson, better known as the second voice of Clyde McBride from seasons three to five, including the movie. This is very similar to how Lincoln's original voice actor Grant Palmer later went on to voice the character Grant, coincidentally also being a Burp and Burger employee who shares the name of the actor who voices him. Whether Andre will make future regular appearances like Grant is yet to be determined, but it is great to see, well, technically here, how some past actors on the show are not truly forgotten. Moving on from that, even though this would be considered a joint Luann and Benny episode, I have to say this is more of a Benny episode since the story focused more on him than Luann. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the first time a minor recurring character got their own individual episode. That's something I can really appreciate because it gives the audience more of a chance to see someone other than a central character being the main focus and seeing how they develop as a result of being in the spotlight. Perhaps this episode can open the door to other minor recurring characters like Sam getting her own episode one day, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Anyway, we find out Dairy Land has an off-season and that's why Benny got a job at the Burp and Burger. He got promoted to assistant manager despite his short tenure, and he was praised by Andre for his work ethic, showing how much of a dedicated worker he can be. Of course, being an assistant manager means taking on some big responsibilities like training new employees, and training Luann was not that easy. Although really it should have been, considering Benny explained how she had prior food service experience from working at her dad's restaurant. But before I talk more about Luann, it's important that I discuss the story first since it's the bridge that connects Luann and Benny's respective roles. The story followed the usual premise in which which some character hires someone, be it a family member, a friend, or in Benny's case, his own girlfriend, to work at their job, the new employee is making a bad impression, and the person who recommended the new employee has to choose between either firing them or no longer being allowed to keep their managerial position. That was pretty much Benny's situation, and to a degree, you do kind of feel bad for him. He loves Luann and everything that makes up who she is because he's into the same thing she is, so it's understandable why he would think firing his girlfriend would mean the end of their relationship. Remember, they're teenagers and teenagers get freaked out and upset over all kinds of things, so just keep that in mind when thinking about Benny's breakup hallucination. He tried to have it both ways by keeping Luann out of his boss's eyesight so as to convince Andre that he did in fact fire her, something he felt he couldn't do as a boyfriend. He thought having her do all kinds of tasks that would take her outside the restaurant would be the solution, but the power of clever cartoon conveniences kept bringing Luann back inside. Obviously, Benny's plan went south the moment Luann and Andre crossed paths, and he had no other choice but to step up as the responsible assistant manager he was promoted to be by doing the unthinkable, telling his girlfriend her behavior was unacceptable and she had to be let go because of it. So now we come to Luann. Now on the one hand, I can't say Luann was presented incorrectly. Making puns and acting like a comedy entertainer plays right into the kind of character she is, so her performance in this episode isn't anything new, and it was to be expected. However, even though I will give credit to how she didn't bring Mr. Coconuts with her to work, which honestly would have brought the episode down a lot more. My main issue with Luann in this episode is how there wasn't a balance between being a jokester and being a good and reliable worker as we've seen in episodes like Dine and Bash. From screwing around on the drive through intercom to putting comedy props in people's orders, including giving out fake dog crap to anyone who ordered the number two menu item, Andre was not wrong to say she was the worst employee he had ever seen. He's a guy who takes fast food very seriously, a bit too seriously actually, and has a standard code of conduct and Luann simply didn't fit that standard. 
weird. In my opinion, this episode played around with the immature side of Luann's character more than it needed to, and it makes you wonder if she would ever pull the same stunts at any job she'd be hired at, not just some place where her boyfriend or her own family just happened to work. Still, the fact Luann was very mature and not getting super emotional about getting fired was still a good enough sign of redemption. She actually admitted to going overboard and was only trying to have fun with Benny the same way they used to have fun at Dairyland during the regular season. This episode suggests they haven't been spending a lot of time together, which makes sense if you factor in their respective amusement park jobs and their respective school and family commitments, so I can sort of see why Luann trying to turn her job into a comedy act would be a subtle way of trying to make up some lost time with her boyfriend since they haven't been seeing each other as much. In the end, Luann got to keep her job and Benny got to keep his assistant manager position thanks to his idea on how they could spend more time together and keep Luann from causing problems inside the restaurant. Because she was the best at wearing the Heidi Heffer costume, a reference to the episode Stress for the Part, she was perfect for being the restaurant sign spinner, something Andre didn't really want to do himself, so everyone got to have a happy ending. Well, everyone except Otis, who had to go back in the wheelchair after getting all his cash removed following another on-the-job injury regarding the very same sign, this time courtesy of Luann. The poor guy just couldn't catch a break, and apparently he couldn't catch the sign either. Not to mention how he was locked in the freezer for most of the episode, and everyone just seemed to not care. Note to self, when someone offers you a job at Bourbon Burger with the kind of co-workers we saw here, for the sake of your arms, legs, and body temperature, don't take it! Overall, this episode was not exactly the greatest Luann and Benny episode of the series, but when it came to the usual story about having to choose between your significant other and your job, it was still pretty good. Benny got to have a more leading role, and for once had to put his foot down when it came to Luann's comedy antics, which I'll admit came off more strongly than what was necessary. As for Luann, she may have overplayed the comedy part of her character and didn't find the right balance between the concept of knowing there's a time for play and a time for work until the very end, which makes you wonder how she'd been truly handling herself at Dairyland and Lynn's table. But knowing Benny had to call her out on her inappropriate behavior and not taking it too personally does offer a little redemption to what she had done. No matter what, Luann and Benny's relationship didn't come to an end as a result of Benny having to do his job as a manager, and even if you say Luann still technically got rewarded by being allowed to stay as the company's sign spinner, perhaps this opens the door to her finally taking it easy when it comes to any on-the-job tomfoolery. I'm not banking on it, but it's always something to think about. With that said, I give Puns and Buns an 8.3 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Puns and Buns. Before I go, there's one last thing about the episode that caught my attention especially if you were born and raised on classic Nickelodeon movies from the 90s. When Luann was in the milkshake machine trying to fix it, did anyone else catch the reference to the movie Good Burger? Luann was spinning inside the machine, and it reminded me of how Ed flipped the switch and effectively turned the machine into a strawberry jacuzzi. I don't know if it was the writer's intention to make a Good Burger reference, but since the movie and The Loud House were both made by the same company, and seeing how the show already paid tribute to classic Nickelodeon game shows in previous episodes, I think it's safe to assume the Good Burger milkshake reference was in fact intentional. So, all that's left to say is, thank you Loud House for once again acknowledging the golden era of Nickelodeon. But anyway, as far as the rest of the episode goes, what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me, I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team BWK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.